Here we are day two in the morning, 7.45 a.m. on our way to breakfast. Yes, this is early for me. And we're going to another hotel. And I do like breakfast, so we're gonna see how that goes. All right. Sheraton Tel Aviv on our way to breakfast. Our security detail. It's kind of blurry here in the morning. Oh, what? So do it, do it that way. And here's a little spread we had for breakfast this morning. It's very, very good. Very good. Hi, I'm Tom Goldberger. I'm the Deputy Chief of Mission at the U.S. Embassy in Israel. I've been here for about two years and working to promote a strong relationship between the U.S. and Israel. And you just talked with uh, the group of mayors and NBA um, former... I had the honor to meet with a group of uh, retired NBA players and former and current former political leaders and officials from the United States, and it's really neat to see them here in Israel. So you've been in Israel for a couple years. How do you compare it to other places that you've been? Israel is a fantastic, open, exciting place that's uh, thriving in the Middle East. It's a real vision of what the uh, Middle East could be in the future. And uh, I'm proud to see that it has a really strong ties to the United States. You know, since I work in um, college basketball in the NBA, what's your, what's your college basketball team? Well, I'm a, I went to Rutgers University in okay. New Jersey, the Scarlet Knights. Um, go up and go down. So. What about the NBA? <laughs> NBA, I'm a New Yorker, so. So you weren't too thrilled about LeBron James and the Miami Heat well, taking it all? Well, well, you know, it's always another way. So what did you think about the Jeremy Lin fascination this year? Were you a big fan of the Linsanity, Jeremy Lin? Yeah, Linsanity was a big thing here, big thing here in Israel. It's, okay. uh, it's amazing how uh, how interested Israelis are in the NBA. When they get up in the middle of the night, uh, watch NBA games, and have a pretty thriving uh, basketball game. Yeah. Well, so, so. All right, well, thanks a lot. Visiting a protected playground on Israel's border with Syria and Gaza and some pictures with some of the crew and we quickly realized that getting guys down on these bouncy gyms was easy but getting them up not so easy. Here we are inside of the playground that they created so that the children could play unencumbered by the conflict and not bothered by the missiles from the Gaza Strip and he mentioned that 74 percent of the kids in this city are afflicted with the post-traumatic stress syndrome uh, and kids just don't play because they're just inside the house all the time afraid of the bombs and here we have their version of basketball and like we've seen in the states as long as you get a hoop and a basket, you can make it happen. Clearly, they're making it happen. That's what you call love of the game. Wherever you're at, you get a basketball, a hoop, and you play. Here we are on the Gaza Strip. Security. Make sure not to stand next to Joe Brook. Big Joe, biggest target out here in yellow. <laughs> right. Here we are in the Gaza Strip with the this uh, a reservoir of water. You notice the water's down. We're about a mile from the Gaza Strip, and if you look over here, that is a Gaza, whoa, supposedly is a Gaza Strip, there we go, settlement. That little, little white thing over there is a 
satellite what they use for reconnaissance. You can hear that gunfire. That's people shooting at me. No, I'm just kidding. That is actually a military outpost, a shooting range. Very interesting here being at the Gaza Strip. It's our security detail. For some reason he's in front of me instead of behind me. I need to talk to them about that later on. Why am I bringing up the rear is my question. Okay, good. I'm not the last man standing. This says enter at your own risk. Okay, maybe it didn't say that, but... Here we are in another settlement near Gaza. Um, and this actually right here is a personal bomb shelter. You see the gentleman from the great state of Georgia. And I have one son, he's 13 years old. Um, and the father, which is very important to, uh, to the basketball players, I see them by the height. Uh, two things. First, I, will, I wear my highest uh, shoes. Sure. I don't get taller than this. David was talking about yesterday, proximity, how close things are, distances, very deceptive. In other words, really, Jerusalem and Bethlehem are right next to each other. When we're talking about biblical Bethlehem, the place of, let's say, the church in the nativity, where according to Christian tradition Jesus was born, that we cannot see from here, but more or less the top of the hill on the other side slightly would be the area of the church in the nativity, which is again, uh, we could walk there. It would take us a while, but we could walk there. Bottom line is two things. Most of the wall, meaning 97% of the barrier, is fence, as you can see right over here. And why is that? Why do we have wall? Why do we have so that's a So that's Palestinian on the other side of the wall? Yes, yes. Now let's look at the fall. I'm going to show you a uh, small little, let's see here, this picture. Here we are in Jerusalem at another spot. We just got done looking at the controversial electronic and physical wall that separates Jewish and Palestinian neighborhoods. Here we are at another sightseeing part of Jerusalem. Really at the center of all the historical significant religious movement and all the conflict that we're experiencing right now in the new millennium. And you think of Muslim, Christianity, Judaism, all of their central beliefs revolve around this mountaintop here in Jerusalem. And you have these significant places for all these religions, the main places for all these religions, and that's why we have all this conflict. And that's why the Middle East is one of the most hotly contested landscape right here, really in the world. You talk about New York, uh, Manhattan. No, this is the real estate right here that you're playing Monopoly in is where all the marbles are at and some of the most beautiful land architecture in the world. I played here in 2000, now I'm able to come back more as a tourist and able to really to get the atmosphere and see what's going on with the area and I'm just truly blessed to be able to be here and see it with my own eyes and, and really just be a part of it. And you know, regardless of what religion you are, what culture, what creed, this is the place that really should just be cherished and not fought over. And hopefully in my lifetime we'll see that. But until then, we can just enjoy it.